Let's take a look at microservice pipelines in Streamsets Data Collector 3.4.0 and the new tutorial that teaches you all about them. Now if you create a new pipeline in 3.4.0 you'll notice that there's a new option here, a microservice pipeline. And when you create one you actually get a full template microservice with instructions on uh, testing it out. So we get a curl command here that lets us uh, send a request to the uh, pipeline. So uh, let's start the pipeline and go to a terminal. And what we're going to do is we're just going to do a request against localhost 8000. This is the port that the pipeline is uh, listening on. And what we're going to see is we just get some dummy data back. Okay, It's going to say uh, sample username, ID, age, address, and so on. What's happening is uh, the request is being uh, routed to uh, this expression evaluator and all this is doing is setting some uh, dummy fields. If we go back and we take a look in the uh, configuration here in the description we can see that we can post uh, some data up and again we can do this from here and what happens is uh, we get some uh, sample data in the response here. So we post it up um, name, age and address and we get back this post request processed and similarly that's coming from here, this uh, expression evaluator. It's just stuffing some um, uh, response into the message before it gets posted, uh, before it gets uh, returned to the post uh, request. Now this is a great starting point for uh, building a microservice, a RESTful web service and we have a tutorial that walks you through uh, starting from this point and building up to uh, quite an elaborate uh, pipeline that actually interacts with a database, so I built it with MySQL and it implements the full, uh, as we call it, CRUD, so we can create read, uh, update, and delete records. So if we have a look at this pipeline, what it's doing is the uh, origin is this new REST service uh, origin. And that's listening on port 8000. It's very like the HTTP server origin, and it's accepting requests in uh, JSON format and giving a response back in JSON format. Now what we're doing is we're looking at the incoming URL to parse uh, an ID from the end of the path, okay? So the URL path is going to be something like rest slash v1 slash user slash ID. If the request actually has an ID in the path, we're going to read a record from the database and um, we're going to test whether we found it. So if we go back here a second, um, it's this quite elaborate SQL query here that I explain in the tutorial, but this basically sets a found flag if it uh, finds the uh, record there with the ID. And if the method is patched, that's all it does. But uh, otherwise, it's going to get the name from the database as well. Because if we're doing a get, for example, we want to bring that name back. And then if, uh, if we found the record, then uh, we're going to go on to this request router. Uh, if we didn't find it, if the client supplied an ID that wasn't there, we get to re return a 404 error. So this is the one of the new stages here. This is the um, uh, send response to origin stage. So we configured this to send uh, the current record. Uh, that, that, so that'll have the erroneous ID and 404 back to the client. Otherwise, we're going to route it through here. And if it was a get, then we've done everything we need, right? We've got the uh, the name in this read record stage. So we can just send a success, a 200 response back to the client. If it were, say, um, uh, a patch, or sorry, if it were, say, a post to create a record, we'd go along here and say, OK, we want to create a record in the database. This is the table. And when we send it, um, some data, it's going to give us uh, the record ID. Okay, ID is an auto increment field in the database table, and that's going to be in the post response. So 
So that's a quick walkthrough of the, of the pipeline. It's probably easier to understand if I just go ahead and run it and uh, we'll see how it works. So uh, let's start it here. Okay, so we're listening for requests now. So if I go back to my terminal here, um, I can uh, look at the current state of the database. So we've got three users there, Jim, Chuck, and Babs. And let's uh, read uh, some existing entries, okay? So if we look for, um, this should do it. So I'm doing um, a get on localhost 8000 rest v1 user1. And I'm just passing it through JQ, a really useful tool for handling JSON. That's going to uh, give me the JSON response in a much easier to understand form. So I've done the get and I can see that um, I found ID number one, record ID number one, and his name is Jim. And if we look in the database, yep, that all looks right. And I can repeat that. I can go and say, okay, let me get user number two is Chuck. And we can test the uh, record not found logic. If we get user 99, then uh, we get uh, a 404. So that's in the message body as well as the HTTP response code. And we also uh, get the, the record that we passed, um, which has got that ID 99. So it's useful for uh, debugging and so on. Okay, so let's create a record. So I'm gonna create um, a user Bob. So you'll see here that uh, the request is to post. I don't need an ID because it's a new record. And I'm sending this JSON payload with name Bob. And again, I'm just gonna pass the response through uh, JQ. So we get 200, okay, the, uh, with a new ID, nine. If we go here, we can see We've uh, processed a few records, so three gets and um, one post. In fact, we can go along here and see that, uh, oh, sorry, two gets. One was, the, one was the not found. And then we can see that creates being processed there. So a total of four records. And if we go to the database, what we should see is that record number nine is Bob. Okay, so when you're building these pipelines, you can do some really cool things. So maybe the next thing we want to do is look at um, updates, okay? So with an update, we would send uh, a patch request. So if I say patch, and here's one I did earlier, I just need to change the ID to number nine. So this is going to say, okay, um, update record number nine, and we're gonna change his name from Bob to Robert. We've decided we wanna be a little bit more formal in our user table. Before I do that, I'm going to say I want to take a snapshot. So a snapshot allows you to capture data in flight and then uh, do a little bit of analysis debugging uh, on its path through the pipeline. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna capture a new snapshot. That's waiting for the next batch of data to arrive. Let's send that batch of data so I've got the response already, okay, uh, name Robert, ID number nine. I can see it in the uh, database. So I know that the pipeline has processed that. And if I go back, I've got this snapshot that I can now view. Now this is a tremendously powerful feature of Data Collector. We actually get to inspect the data in flight. So remember, this was a running pipeline. This could be in production. We could use snapshot to scoop out a batch of data and then examine it. So I can see that the incoming record has a name set to Robert, so it's been passed from that JSON. And I can see the record header. So this is all of that uh, HTTP um, metadata concerning the request. So I can see it's uh, been sent with the patch method. Uh, I can see the uh, URL path and so on. Now, if I go to here, I can see that my expression evaluator correctly parsed the ID nine. So again, that came from this path. It was parsed out by a regular expression. And then of course, I can see that it meets this condition that it does have an ID. So a record was read from the database. So here, uh, found's been set to one. So we can see why I uh, created that interesting looking um, uh, SQL query there. 
I don't want to get the existing name out of the database if I'm sending a new name because that's gonna, it's gonna overwrite my data. So uh, the record was indeed found. So uh, the control goes to the HTTP request router and I can see here that uh, we had patch as the method. So it was sent to stream number two, which is uh, update. And again, um, I can see that uh, uh, the record passed through here and then um, was sent to this uh, send patch response. So I can see that name, ID and found were sent. And going back here, I can see that, you know, that, that is in indeed what was received. And of course I could add stages here. If I didn't want to send this found flag back, I could put in, uh, you know, after this point somewhere, I could put in a field remover, um, that kind of thing. I can, I can um, massage the data. I can transform it to do uh, whatever I like. So if we just come out of snapshot there, we can go back and we can kind of close the loop here. We've done a create, uh, we did a read. Um, we can maybe do another read here to say, okay, um, uh, you know, just let's, let's read it back through the web service. So we don't need uh, the payload there. And we're just gonna say, uh, do a get. So that of course should return us Robert. And then just to close the loop, um, we can do a delete. So again, the delete doesn't need any payload. We're just going to delete uh, that path ending in nine. So we say delete. And again, uh, that gives us 200. And uh, if we go over here, we can see that uh, we're back down to our original three users. And indeed, if we go over here, we could say, go to there, we've seen we've processed one delete and uh, we've sent one delete response so far. So um, that's a microservice pipeline that implements create, read, update, and delete, uh, reading and writing records to MySQL in this case. And if you want to build one of these, you just need to uh, install Data Collector if you haven't already done so. I would recommend doing the basic tutorial um, just to get the feel of the UI and some of the concepts. Uh, again, if you, if you don't have any experience with uh, Data Collector, and then you can work through this and you will build, uh, build that pipeline. Thank you very much for watching.